so this is moving forward. Moving forward was a zine made in an edition of 3000 back in 2010. And uh, the idea here was to address the killing of Oscar Grant by Johannes Messerly of the BART police. There was a mural of Oscar Grant put at 14th and Broadway. It had is either those were panels that were taken down. It's very possible, or it was it has since been painted out. Uh, this story you can look up online, or I'll write more about it underneath the entry here. But I want to talk about the piece itself so we have an idea of what was conducted here. This is 3,000 zines, 1,500 in English. It begins with a logo that's by Christina Rasmussen, who was the intern at FFPTP. Uh, when we were working on this here. Um, this is an FFPTP publication, but we left all names off of it because we wanted to try to communicate that there was a community behind it. So we made 3,000 of these, 1,500 in English and 1,500 in Spanish, and we put them uh, all throughout the community, uh, both where the incident happened in Fruitvale, predominantly in Spanish there, and also uh, just all around North Oakland and in different places. Thousands of these were put on buses and on BART trains and on uh, benches and uh, handed out to people and etc. By the way, Glenn DeSico has to be called out here as a person who really helped with that. So the zine works something simple like this. It's an eightfold made from a single piece of paper. You're going to learn about that in the video that's coming up right now, but I wanted to... Moving forward, after the Messerly verdict, Volume 1, Bart Cops Shouldn't Have Guns. And we never made a volume two, but I really encourage anyone out there, it's so simple to do. Once you watch the video, you can figure out how to make an eight-fold zine. But um, I encourage anyone to make a volume two, a volume three of a moving forward after the Messerly verdict. That would be fine. I'd love that. So the idea here is Oscar Grant III, 23, was shot in the back and killed while lying face down, prone and unarmed by BART officer Johannes Messerly, 28, in the dawning hours of 2009. Within 72 hours of killing Grant, Messerly quit his job and left the state, running to Nevada. Demanded to appear, Messerly still didn't, and rather, his attorney and a BART union rep appeared on Jan 5th to deliver Messerly's resignation. This relieved BART of culpability for the murder charge. Did negotiations between Messerly's defense and the state take place before he was remanded into custody? Because the verdict feels scripted, like the state began a long campaign on day one to get the weakest guilty verdict and the lightest possible sentence for the officer. The trial was moved out of the neighborhood in what must be considered a pattern. Diallo versus NYPD, the case went from the Bronx to Albany. The state moved the trial to a supposedly neutral location that's better for the officers. What keeps coming up is that officers in these cases do not live where they are policing. They come from suburbs to cities to police, are poorly trained, and often exhibit cultural ignorance of or even bias against the people they police. Juries of their peers share this ignorance and bias. The state introduces the mental state of the officer to the public far more than that of the victim, and does this through the state's collusion with the media. Local cops, TV stations, and newspapers collude morally, ethically, and racially to create the illusion of a balanced coverage, but which subtly turns public opinion toward an acquittal, gently pushing us all to call it a justified killing, to keep us safe. To paint the victim as criminal, the state encourages release of immaterial historical evidence from the victim's past into public consciousness by use of the media. Petty issues, no matter how irrelevant, are dredged up, sometimes illegally, as Giuliani did when NYPD shot unarmed Patrick Dorismond in the back in NYC 2000. Meanwhile, dirt on the cops is often buried by the state and media. Supporters of Mumia claim that the cop Abu Jamal is charged with killing Danny Faulkner may have been running drugs and prostitutes himself where the crime took place, but the state won't consider that Mumia may have killed Faulkner in self-defense. Four, the state's process creates a jury that clearly favors the cop, and for the first time in history, Messerly's counsel argued a policeman should be on the jury. It's against the Constitution to put a cop in a juror's box. They're a part of and empowered specially by the justice system. They can't be on a jury, so of course the judge denied. But Messerly's defense made the crazy request in pretrial hearings, and it was publicized across the state. In the SAC B, a writer quoted a criminal law attorney calling it, quote, a smart move. It is alleged that six of the 12 jurors in Messerly's trial had law enforcement connections. Is an all-cop jury next? 
Look. Jojo is three years old. He's small for his age, wise for his years, second youngest, and fiercely loyal to his siblings and friends. I was walking home with a small group of the kids, ranging in age 3 to 11, when we spied a cop car parked next to the state park. Uh-oh, it's the police, the kids murmured. As we passed the car, the officer smiled and waved, but received little response. Most of the kids gave him sullen looks. It was then Jojo said it. The police shoot people. Jojo's only three, yet he was savvy enough to say it under his breath. But the kids all heard it. A three-year-old's four little words that spoke underlying feelings of so many here, a year and a half after the senseless killing of Oscar Grant. We ask you to hear one of the littlest kids in the East Bay in summer of 2010, after the guilty cop verdict, and no, the cops are over-armed and under-trained. We need to take some of their guns away. The cops are over-armed and under-trained. We need to take some of their guns away. Let's start with Bart. The jury indicted Johannes Messerly for involuntary manslaughter. They felt Messerly honestly made a mistake in killing Grant. But importantly, they included a charge for the use of the gun in Grant's death. The gun enhancement is clear. The jury placed blame for Oscar's death on the gun. They said that because Messerly used the gun, and not the taser for example, Oscar Grant is dead. The way to ensure this horrible mistake doesn't happen again is to take the gun out of the equation on BART. BART cops have cuffs, truncheons, pepper spray, and tasers. There's CCTV at most stations and on all trains. The fact is, there's no good reason for a BART cop to have a gun. Let's take a step toward peace and away from violence. This election season, make your mayoral candidate take a stand. No more guns for BART cops. Pass it on. In English. And in Spanish, pretty much the same thing. I'm very excited to have had this translated by Victor, a close friend. Um, I'm not going to give his full name here, but you can ask about that anytime. Mirando hacia adelante después del verdicto del oficial mesero. Volume 1, Bart Policia no debería portar armas. Forgive my poor Spanish. So 3,000, 1,500 in Spanish, 1,500 in English. Moving forward. FFPTP, 50 foot pine tree press, 2010. Okay, so we have uh, 80 of them right there. 90. Here, there's 90 of them, and uh, this is the single piece of paper that makes them right here, right, front and back. So what happens is you just fold it. I'll do this with one hand. Let's see if I can. I've been doing so many. All right, first this way, and this way, All right, and then this way. The result gets a cover. The cover is a simple thing like that. And you end up with the piece. So, so after the folds, it looks like this. All right. Without a cover. The cover comes in then. And after it's done, it looks like that. It's got the clip. You can see the whole image of uh, Oscar on the outside, and, and all cop jury in the centerfold, and our little Bart logo. No guns on Bart. Moving forward, after the Messerly verdict, Volume One: Bart cops shouldn't have guns. So there we go, we got a hundred of those, or we're gonna have a hundred of those in just a few minutes here.